The National Fisheries Association of Ghana have kicked against a review of the industrial fishing vessel license fees from $35 to uh, $200 per gross tonnage charged by the Fisheries Commission for operating on Ghanaian waters. They lashed out at the Commission for shortchanging them, which they claim will negatively affect their businesses. Fisheries Commission, in a letter dated December 31st, 2019, and signed by its executive director, Michael Arthur Darcy, indicated that the new fishing license fees approved by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning will take effect from December 1, 2020. The letter stated that the chargeable rate per vessel for all industrial vessels both tuna and trollers is $200 per GRT or its equivalent at the prevailing Bank of Ghana rate. Per the statement, it explained that it was said to be a major factor for the depletion of the fish stock in the country's territorial waters. However, members of the National Fisheries Association of Ghana are worried that the Commission had increased the license without the approval of Parliament. They said the current increment is outrageous, adding that there was no prior meeting. They lamented that the Fisheries Commission have therefore decided to impose such high fees at a time that all tuna pole and line vessels are on the verge of collapse. Right, uh, we're joined in the studio by a member of the National Fisheries Association of Ghana, Rich Star, uh, Ni Ama Amafio, uh, joining us. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And thank you very much You're for welcome. coming. So, what really are your concerns? Well, you, you see, we are... You just don't want to pay? It's too high for you? You are, you are adding to our cost of doing business at the time that our revenues are, are coming down. We, in the industrial sector, you have the tuna, mm -hmm. and in the tuna, you have the pear and the polar line, and then you have the troll sector. As we talk now, we have about seven laid up vessels from the polar line because they can't break even, and so they can't continue to fish. You need to break down some of your terms so we no, will understand laid up. The vessel mm -hmm. is not able to fish. It's yeah. just like you say, it, it's not, you, you just packed it. Mm -hmm. It's not fishing because you cannot even run it. We and we've we've made a presentation to the ministry. But the fact that you cannot run it is a business decision. It's not because, no, because the government no, because is of, because charging of some you too much. No, mm. because of some factors that are not help, because you need bait, bait are anchovies, kitasku boys, as we call them, yeah. and then you have a policy that will not allow you get the bait easily. Mm. So you spend a lot more time to get bait, and you spend a lot more fuel. So your running costs go higher. Mm and you are not able to break even. Yeah. And so we have made a presentation several times to the commission to look at those factors that are making. And then the prices of tuna on the international market is of implementing seriously. We are currently about 60% of the peak. If you look at the uh, West and Central Pacific Ocean, they say person operators are bleeding, operating costs below, operating below cost. So internationally, tuna prices are going down. And then you increase fishing license fees by 570%. It doesn't. Last year, they made the attempt. They met us last year, um, that's 2017, prior mm. to 2018. And then we indicated to them that we had met the previous minister. And she looked at our operating conditions and agreed on a 15% increment. That is when our conditions improve. Then they brought up some figures that these are figures in West Africa. And we told them that in the whole of the West African subway, it's only in Ghana that you have a flag vessel. And when we say a flag vessel, flag vessels are vessels that are registered by Ghanaian companies. And in Tuna, you allow 50% foreign participation in Tuna. So they are joint venture companies. The others are assets. And assets vessels don't employ crew from your country. They don't pay taxes. They don't do any statutory payment. So they pay fees to enable them fish, take the fish away. But we are flag vessels, so we pay all statutory payment. We employ crew and all that. So you don't bring us access fees. And even at access, when you go to Benin, uh, some of our vessels go to Benin for access. They pay $131 per ton. And for the period that they intend fishing. So if you tell us to pay 200 so if my vessel is 1,000 gross tonnage, and I'm paying $36,000, now you are saying that I should pay $200,000. That is not fair. 
So there's over 500 percent increment. Uh, let's get onto the other telephone line. Onto the telephone lines. I beg your pardon and speak with Michael Arthur, who is Executive Secretary of the Fisheries uh, Commission. Thanks very much, sir. And uh, we're grateful you could join us. Uh, how do you react to the concerns from uh, those in the Fisheries Association saying that you didn't uh, take into consideration the fact that they're struggling? Their businesses are already suffering from a lot of the impacts of. Uh, a lot of things uh, that don't, don't have to be as your result, but uh, quite a number of things are keeping their businesses low and still you could increase their license by over 500 percent. You're not being reasonable. That's what they're saying. How do you respond? Hello, sir. Right, uh, so we'll try and get uh, uh, him back onto the telephone line so we can discuss this uh, tension where we're told is mounting at the fisheries front. Uh, Michael Arthur is the uh, Executive Secretary of the Fisheries Commission. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I was saying that the fishers are complaining that your, the increment in license up to about 500% is unfair because already their businesses are struggling. How do you respond? Thank you very much. In the first place, um, the name is Atagazi. Atagazi. And I'm the executive director of the Fisheries Commission. <clears throat> I wish to uh, thank the media for your uh, involvement in almost all our activities. Um, first of all, I must say that um, the increment did not just come to four. It had come about as a result of a series of engagement that we've had with the stakeholders of the industry players dating back. But, but, but sir, the industry players have told us right now, I mean, we are here with a representative of the Fishers Association, that they have made several petitions to you, bringing to your attention the, the challenges they're facing and how unrealistic these increments are. So I'm at a loss, really, what kind of uh, negotiations you claim you had with them? Now, sir, we have had engagement with them. Engagement on the fact that we, there was a need for us to uh, have realistic license in his state. You see, let me uh, put this before. Management of fishery resources comes with huge cost implications. They are where, where a division of the commission, monitoring, control, and surveillance division alone, we need not less than 10 million Ghana cities for it to function effectively in monitoring on, and controlling and ensuring proper surveillance so far as uh, marine fisheries resources and inland fisheries resources are concerned. Policing our water is not just a matter of the sea is there, the fishes are there, and then they go and have it. The industry people are aware of the fact that we need to police our water. Hmm. We need to hmm. ensure sustainable management of the resources so that what we came to meet will build upon so that generations yet to come will not come and meet our fishery sector collapse. They should get themselves as industry players. They are doing this for generations to come. Their children and their children's children to come and inherit yeah, but, 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 whatever but, they're But whatever they're doing, me, whatever they're doing for generations to come have to me, be please, within... Let me, uh, please, I've asked the question and I'm laying foundation and answer it. You see... Um, and the fishery sector covers the entire country, both uh, inland and in the coastal belt. People think fishery commission or the fishery sector is only the coastal area. Right. We have offices across the length and breadth of the country, managing right, uh... inland waters and also managing people in the aquaculture sector. And it is all these. Uh, and charges that we put into a central market. Right, uh, Michael Arthur Dazi. Uh, we're grateful for your time, sir. Uh, thank you. We're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael Arthur Dazi is executive director, uh, we're told, of the Fisheries Commission. Uh, he says that they engaged with you and all stakeholders in <laughs> arriving at this increment. That they didn't just bring no, it. No, they didn't just swamp you with it. There was no engagement. 
engagement. Mm. There was an engagement. Zero in engagement. There was an engagement in 2017. They w and we didn't finish. They quickly rushed to parliament with these 200. So we went to parliament, explained to members of parliament. The deputy minister was there with a the select committee. And parliament reversed it. Thereafter, parliament told them, go and engage your stakeholders. We never heard from them again. Until the increment. Un until the increment. Interesting. Uh, so what's going to be your next step? Legal action? It's a possibility. We are looking at that. You can't say any specifics beyond just uh, possibility? Um, it's a possibility because some of us are, some of us are considering taking individual legal actions. And uh, you will be continuing with deliberations in order to be sure that no, if you're they giving all avenues if uh, they the claim, chance. If they claim they have an ally, the ally requires... Because we have a, a, a member on the Fisheries Commission Board who said that there had not been any discussion on specific increment of fishing license yeah. fees. What it means is, is that at, even at the Commission Board, there was no approval. And so how do they get their lie to parliament? And it doesn't lie in their power now to reverse an ally. So probably you will need a court to see if the right procedure had been followed to get the ally passed. And if the right procedure had not been followed, then it, the, the authority to reverse the ally lies with court. Not right. With uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mafia. We're grateful for uh, your time.